First question came from my guy Phil. He said, what do you think Tyler Beatty was drafted to step in and become? Uh, Gus is signed through 2023. Of course, J.K. Dobbins has a few years left on his rookie deal. So what was Tyler Beatty drafted to come in and do? Uh, there's a lot of chatter going on that a lot of fans don't think Beatty even makes the roster just because he was drafted in the sixth round. If you ask me, I think it was a steal because he ran for 1,600 yards last season. What are your thoughts? Um, that draft pick with Tyler Beatty, I, I think that it was really one of those things where it's the ultimate stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Ravens are right now very loaded at the running back position. They have a lot of options. Um, they got, of course, J.K. and Gus, like we mentioned before, Tyler Beatty, uh, but also Justice Hill. He's still around right now. They signed Mike Davis as well. They still got Nate uh, McCrary on a, um, a future reserve type of deal. So they have a lot of options. And, of course, at any given point, they could add more. We've seen them take away an option, but they're set there right now. So they have a lot. Uh, so I think it's one of those cases where it's like, all right, young guy, Rookie deal, four-year deal, so stay ready so we ain't got to get ready, just in case, especially with three of our running backs coming back from major injury. Next question came from my guy, Martin. He said, I think a lot of these Ravens fans who think the Ravens had a plan at wide receiver are going to be really disappointed. Uh, think about it, though. Draft has come and gone. Most of the top wide receivers have been traded. Julio Jones is really the only receiver left on the market. If fans think we're about to trade for Debo or DK, they are wrong because these teams are going to want a first round pick for them. And we all know EDC isn't coming up off of no first round pick. I'm sure he'll offer like a fourth or fifth, but that's about it. So, so my question is, wait. <laughs> He said, where do you think these receivers are going to come from and get ready to embrace Julio Jones? It is looking like it. Julio Jones, you heard them little, not anything verified, anything about T.Y. Hilton, but I just would not want a T.Y. Hilton. Just my opinion, though. Um, Julio Jones, is he the last resort? Is he the last option for the Ravens, Julio Jones? Uh, you still got Odell Beckham Jr., but Odell Beckham Jr., he just, he, he's recovering from the Achilles surgery. Um, so, yeah, I, Julio Jones looking like he might be the one. He might be the one. And it's interesting because with Julio Jones, I, I know there's like, and I've seen fans say it to it, they're like, hey, we should sign Julio, Will Fuller, um, and who's the other one? Oh, there's one more. Maybe T.Y. Hill was it, but they like, we should sign all three because if we sign all three, then that means we're guaranteed to get a 17-game season out of them because they're all going to miss their games. But if we can sign all three, then they can all combine for a full season. But anyway, uh, Julio. Now, Julio could come in and... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say if he could stay healthy because that wouldn't be my expectation because we've seen what Julio can do and what we've seen what he's done uh, as far as health. And the health just, it hasn't been that. He's going to miss time. I think everybody's expectation will be that he is going to miss time. But if he misses time, all right, do you have other guys that can step in and show out, that can fill that role? That can be that number two guy. Because we could not have Julio be the, the number one. We couldn't have him be the guy. He could be a guy and a significant contributor for sure. But he couldn't be the guy because if they guarantee, they depended on him to be the guy, they, it, it would be, he would be missing. He'd be MIA because he is most likely going to get hurt. We would, of course, hope that he wouldn't get hurt, but the expectation would be that he would. Just like Sammy Watkins. We hoped that he wouldn't get hurt, but the expectation was that he would get hurt, and he did get hurt. So nobody was surprised. Um, so with Julio, though, he could still make some plays. He would give you that big body target. He would give you somebody that's reliable, somebody that has literally done everything that there is to do in this league, except, of course, win the Super Bowl. But he's played in every type of game. Uh, he would give you that veteran leadership to where those guys are in the huddle. They all might be freaking out. And they like, oh, what do we do? Lamar might be freaking out. He might be rattled a bit. And Julio would be like, look. I know what you're going through. I done been here. I, I, I know what it's like to be in your shoes. I know, I know what this situation, I know what this moment is like. This is what we need to do. And he could be that sort of, that calming guy. That, <sighs> just breathe. Um, but we, again, we know what he, he's capable of. Um, but if they signed a Julio, 
Uh, and I don't really even think, because I know some people think, oh, he would take away from everybody else. Would he really? Like, in fact, he would actually give to other people because the expectation would be that he would miss time. And then other guys, would, they would have to step up anyway. But with Julio, um, if they were to sign a Julio, that would give them quality depth. Quality depth, um, leadership, experience, um, somebody who's proven. Again, the biggest thing that would scare most Ravens fans when it comes to Julio, which I completely understand, is the injuries. The, the hamstrings, they, they be acting up. That boy got some. He, they, they, the Ravens just need to supply him with a bunch of bananas, man. Give that boy a bunch of bananas and whatnot. No, I'm thinking a Charlie horse, not hamstring. But something, they, they need to have that boy stretching out all the time. Um, even when ain't nobody stretching, have Julio stretch. Um, just try to counter it, but he, he, he would be somebody that would be respected too. And if Julio's on the field, uh, and he's healthy, he could help Rashad Bateman. He could help take away attention from Mark Andrews. He could be physical to block in the running game. He could just give Lamar somebody where Lamar could be like, all right, if all else fails, whatever, throw it up, Julio come down with it. He will get you a jump ball guy. He, again, he give you physicality. Um, depending on how them hammies act, he give you some speed, a decent amount of speed. He ain't the same Julio that he was before, and we're not expecting the same Julio that he used to be. Uh, but Julio, I, I almost feel like Julio right now um, at this point, because, yeah, I don't expect them to trade for a Debo or DK either. I would love if they traded for a DK Metcalf, but I, I do not never expected them to do that. I would love if they did, but the expectation isn't there. But Julio, I um, feel like right now when you look out there, um, he may be the best option just because of how he could complement the Ravens. Um, and not many options out there. And again, I, I don't even feel like he would just he would take away so much from the other receivers that are on the team already. I really don't. But he will give you some somebody that's proven. And the other guys they will still get their burn too because Julio ain't gonna be out there twenty four seven. Um, so yeah, I, I guess Julio is like the not the necessarily the last resort, but maybe the best of the last. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the ravens, like the ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. So if you couldn't tell, this was another episode of NFL Questions from Subs where we answer plenty of questions that y'all provide uh, via Patreon and via the email. And I love y'all. Team Keep It Clean, thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much for your patience because I know it's been a while since we've done questions from subs. But hey, we back, so let's keep it moving. Next question came from Yolanda B. She said, hello, Engraven. Hope you and your family are doing well. With the lack of Lamar's contract extension and now Hollywood's departure, as much as I do not like to even think about it, I am beginning to wonder if Lamar will actually stay with the Ravens after this season. You know what's funny? Um, even before Hollywood's departure, a lot of people question this. Uh, and then once Hollywood was traded, people questioned it even more. But anyway, um, she said, my question is this. If it comes down to a scenario of either Giro, Greg Roman stays or Lamar Jackson stays, which one do you think the Ravens will want to keep? Uh, the reason I ask is because I wonder if Lamar will get to a point that he tells the front office, I want to stay a Raven, just not under Giro's system. Thank you so much for your great content. Now, in, in my opinion, and I appreciate you, Londa. In my opinion, I, I think that this, the way that the Ravens have been uh, bringing in coaches and whatnot, and also bringing in players that fit Giro's style of doing things, I think they have they are building the team to where it's like, all right, Greg Roman, no excuses, no excuses. We have a lot of depth in all the. The, the pieces that you value the most Offensive line And of course that should be valued by any kind of offense that you run But tight end, Ravens got like 20 tight ends on the roster right now 20 of them <laughs> um, Maybe 21 So they, And they, they got They got their receivers But they, receive, they got a lot of unproven receivers But they got enough receivers to I guess to, to get by a lot is unproven. They still got a lot to prove out there right now. So we'll see what happens. But tight end, offensive line, tight end. 
and a quarterback that can move. Those are the things, in my opinion, that Greg Roman's offenses value the most. So it feels like the Ravens are being like, all right, Giro, there you go. You're set. But at the same time, like this year, they, they provided him with a lot for him. They've also have these other coaches. Last year, they brought, they, they brought in the T. Martin and Keith Williams, and those guys specialize at wide receiver. They specialize where Greg Roman does not specialize. So I think Greg Roman has a lot of pressure on him as well, from the Ravens too. And even when you heard John Harbaugh um, in, that, um, in his first presser after the season ended, and the way he spoke about Greg Roman and, and he talked about the offense and he said, yeah, the, the, they were like six in, in yards, something like that. But 17th in points. He said, no, that's, that's not good enough. He said, we got to score more points. And that is him talking to offensive coordinator. And because, you know, like if EDC, if Vishati, they put that pressure on Harbaugh, Harbaugh, <laughs> Harbaugh going to start pointing out to everybody. Hey, hey, it ain't me. It's them. You know, I let them do their thing. It's them. Greg Roman, uh, yeah, if that pressure gets on Harper, Harper going to put that pressure on Roman, and Roman will be the one, the first one to go. Uh, but anyway, um, I think the Ravens, they have brought in these different coaches, uh, and then they brought in, they hired the guy this year, um, I want to say, oh, is it Kerry Dixon uh, from, was it from Georgia Tech? I, I, I forget, but anyway, they, they brought him in, and he was a wide receiver coach before. They brought him in to be an assistant QB coach. And it's like the Ravens seem like they may be doing a shift to life after Greg Roman. They, it's like they're preparing themselves for life after Greg Roman. So that's something that a lot of us have been noticing as well. So, but then with Lamar Jackson, with the way that they've been building the team, it, it seems like they, they have built this team to where, because, and this is one of the reasons, and I said this before, this is one of the reasons why I don't think that, well, one of the reasons I think that they haven't, uh, traded for a big time wide receiver, or even signed one of the big names and whatnot, because they don't know what's going to happen with Lamar Jackson. They don't know what the future is with Lamar Jackson. They have said the public, oh yeah, we want Lamar Jackson to be a Raven forever, and I'm sure they do. And Lamar Jackson has came out and said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm saying going nowhere. I ain't thinking about going nowhere. I'm gonna stay with the Ravens. I'm sure he does, but until something is officially official, anything could go down. Anything could go down. Some could go left. Some could go sideways. Anything could happen. And the way that this team is built right now, in my opinion, it's not even built for Lamar. It's really not. It's not built for Lamar. Now, uh, with Hollywood leaving, um, Lamar is going to be put to the test. Because now, ain't no more loyalty. Well, there's loyalty to Mark Andrews. But ain't no more loyalty when it comes to wide receivers. Because he had that, uh, that extra loyalty to Hollywood because uh, that was his guy. But now, and I'm, I'm, I ain't saying that the other receivers aren't his guy. But it was different with Hollywood, man, because they, they had them Florida ties. Shout out to Florida. But now, um, he ain't going to just be locked on Hollywood. He, he can spread the ball around and whatnot. Uh, but as far as the quality of the core of receivers, I question it. And I'm not saying that, that, that they're bad. I'm not saying that at all. They're just unproven. And the Ravens have continued throughout Lamar's entirety of his career. They've continued to lollygag and just uh, piddle paddle and just, uh, it's not a big deal. Lamar, he'll be all right when it comes to the wide receiver position. They keep doing it. They, they've done it his whole career. Now we're in year five. And it's, it's the same thing. And I'm going to be, oh, look at all the receivers the Ravens drafted. Got to get them a shot. I'm not going to understand that, but. You had plenty of opportunities to go get that guy. Not unproven guys, but that guy. And of course, for unproven guys to prove themselves, they got to prove themselves, right? Of course they do. But you could have still got Lamar better. You could have got him bigger and better. Because it's one thing to say, oh, hey, we took shots. We took chances. But did they really take the best quality chances? In my opinion, no. I don't think so. So I feel like the Ravens, the, 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 the team, the franchise, the organization, they are at a big crossroads right now uh, when it comes to Lamar, when it comes to Greg Roman, when it comes to life after Greg Roman. They are the big, they are the big crossroads right now uh, in that whole thing. And this year, like so much is on the line for everybody. So much. So much. 
Um, oh, but to answer your question, uh, if it depends on like Lamar or Giro, I think the Ravens would pick Lamar. They would pick Lamar. Their actions, they say a little different. But the money, <laughs> Lamar's money. That's um that that's uh, that's he brings in a lot of money for the Ravens, a lot of revenue. And the NFL is a business. That's what it's about. They're about making money. And Lamar is literally like the team. Lamar does so much, as we all know. We ain't got to go over it, but he does so much for these Ravens. They count on him a lot. And I'm, I mean, he's a starting quarterback. You can say the same thing about a lot of other teams, but the way that they use Lamar to do it, you can't say a lot about, other, about a lot of other teams. So, if it came down to Greg Roman and Lamar, uh, I mean, they better choose Lamar, right? Next question came from my boy Justin C. He said, hey, what's up, Engraver? Just wanted to send a super quick question, and thanks for all the draft coverage and content you gave us. Uh, I know I sent the question in before the draft about all the picks we have, and I know you thought, and I agreed that we would likely not use them all, but wow. Not only did we... <laughs> He said, not only did we use all 10, but then we traded Hollywood and got another. And they used it. Uh, so, yeah, I, y'all know I was shocked about that. Because I was like 2,000% sure. Like, they ain't about to use no 10 draft. They used 10 draft picks. Anyway, um, he said, were you shocked? At, were you as shocked as I was seeing the Ravens use all their picks and not get, even getting a receiver all draft? Uh, and what's your thoughts on the draft as a whole? Do you feel it was a success or do you feel like they dropped the ball somewhere? Yeah, only, only place I feel like they like dropped the ball uh, was at the receiver position. But um, with everything else that they did, it, it was a good draft. It was a good draft because they filled a lot of needs. Um, some of it wasn't need because uh, their first pick, Kyle Hamilton, he was not a need. But he... Um, he gives you more flexibility uh, on defense, uh, allows you to do more things. Um, and we'll see what happens with Chuck Clark at this point. Um, but, yeah, the, the draft was good. Now, as far as, um, yeah, I was, I was very shocked that they didn't get a receiver. But a, as every round passed, uh, really, especially after the third round, first and second round, I was like, okay, okay, who, who's it going to be? Nothing happened. I was like, oh, okay. Then third round, I was thinking, okay, well, maybe. But then nothing happens. Like, oh, then fourth round, I was thinking, ah, they could, but we know how the story is going to end. Next question came from my boy Mike H. He said, hey, Engraven, I've seen a lot of Ravens fans frustrated at wide receiver, but honestly, uh, this might have been one of the best drafts to date. I look at the bigger picture. Injuries killed the Ravens last season. They need depth, and they got depth. Now, where's their depth at wide receiver? Think about that. Like, like you said, injuries killed them last season. What happens if one of their receivers went down? Especially if it was one of their top guys. And we don't even know who the top guys are going to be yet. But what if one of their top guys went down? Then what? Then what happens? How does this team look? So you answered a lot of people's questions when you talked about the depth. They need depth there. And I'm sure that they're going to get it some way, somehow. But right now they don't have, they don't really have it. Anyway, um, he said Lamar will be well protected. Check. Offensive line looking like it's going to be good. Uh, the running game will be elite. Check. As long as the offensive line is good, then the running game should be. Uh, and hopefully, it'll be a lot less running game from Lamar as far as designed runs. Of course, Lamar, hey, you're going to take off, take off. But the design runs, let's, let's cut down on a lot of that. But anyway, um, and the defense will be solid. I think they can actually be better than solid. As long as they stay healthy, I think they can be better than solid. But anyway, so yeah. The secondary looks nasty. Agreed. As long as they're healthy. Uh, I think EDC still has some tricks up his sleeve for wide receiver. I think he might make one last push for wide receiver with free agency. Well, yeah, it's like what we talked about earlier. Um, he got some options. Are they the best options? No, no, no. But it's like the only other options they got, I mean, they could roll what they got. You know they're not going to do that. Um, they could trade for somebody. You figure that, well, I figure they're not going to do that. Um, well, they could sign a free agent. So I think a lot of us figure they're going to do that. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, hey, Engraven, I watch your videos daily, but I just became a dad and I've been so busy with life. That's why I haven't put in a question from subscribers in months. Hey, congratulations to you, John. That, that's, that's great, man. So, yeah, do your thing, man. Uh, congrats. I know that that's a big responsibility. And that, you think, ooh, I, I know you busy, man. Like, busy, busy now. But anyway, he said, with, our de with how our defense is looking, 
uh, after the draft, our defense is looking really nasty. We will have the best secondary in the league, and with the new additions to our defensive line and incision of youth, I believe we will have a better pass rush. I mean, they can't get worse, can they? <laughs> he said, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I just feel like, yeah, and, and they, they did add some youth and some strength, too, uh, with Travis Jones, and they added some flexibility. Uh, we talked about it in the last uh, question from Mike about the flexibility with the secondary. But as far as with Travis Jones, matter BK, you brought Michael Pierce to replace Brandon Williams, brought back Calais Campbell. Um, I think um, uh, Broderick Washington, he should still be there, too. So you'll have more flexibility along that defensive line, allow Calais Campbell not to be so winded and tired and have to do so much. Uh, but so that, that, that should be good. He said, by the way, I love Hollywood Brown, and I'm sad to see him leave, but I do believe the trade was for the best for both parties. It, it was. It was. If, if he ain't want to be there, okay, cool. Ravens, they're like, oh, you don't want to be here? All right, cool. We love our draft picks. All right, even cooler. Okay, bye. We love you. Um, and you got to put him in a good situation to where he, the, him and the quarterback, they definitely got chemistry. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's good for both sides, man. And for those who hate on Hollywood, at least he did the Ravens right and didn't make it public to devalue himself in trades. Exactly. He allowed for the Ravens to get great value back for him. Yeah, first round pick for a 2019 first round pick. Yeah, excellent value. The last question on this episode came from Hadi. He said, what's up, Engraven? I'm writing this as I'm watching your draft live stream. We just traded Hollywood to Arizona, so you know when this was. Uh, and I am at a loss of words. I'm going to make my question short and sweet. How do you think this will impact Lamar signing with us? Much love to you and Team Keep It Clean. We'll get through this together, my guy. And just like Hollywood is with the Ravens, sadly, I'm out. Um, so, yeah, now, the, w as far as Lamar, how will this impact him? And I, I said it the, the day after. Um that it just depends on how the Ravens move forward now. It depends on what the Ravens do now and how they provide for their franchise who should be their who should be their franchise quarterback. Um, it's about their their planning and 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 I, I question what they're gonna do um, because they knew that Hollywood wanted to be traded a long time ago. They knew that before free agency. Uh, but they didn't make any moves to sort of counter the trade. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We, we, we will see. That is probably the best way uh, to answer that question. Because right now, we just don't know. We don't know. Um, and I'm sure Lamar didn't like it. But I'm sure Lamar understands the why. Why Hollywood got traded. Why he wanted out. Uh, why the Ravens granted that request. Um, but now it's time to see uh, how. How the Ravens will take care of business after that. They, of course, after this point, they signed a, a few different undrafted free agents at wide receiver, some bigger body guys. But I don't think that's going to be the last thing that they do. I, well, I at least hope not.